Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we're going to discuss if, elif, and else statements. So as I mentioned, in this lecture, we're going to discuss control flow in general. And control flow basically allows us to use logic to execute code only when we want to. So often you have a larger piece of code and you only want certain code to be executed when a particular condition has been met. For example, let's imagine that I'm trying to program a robot to feed my dogs. Then I could say, if my dog is hungry, so that's the condition, my dog being hungry, then I'll have the robot feed the dog. It'll have the actual code execute or perform some action. So in order to control this flow of logic, we use some keywords. And the keywords we're going to be introducing in this lecture are if, elif, and else. So let's see the syntax for these three keywords. In order to understand the syntax, we have to understand that control flow syntax in Python makes use of colons and indentation, otherwise known as whitespace. And this indentation system is absolutely crucial to Python, and it's really what sets it apart from other programming language. This use of whitespace and indentation allows Python code to be easily readable and very quick to prototype. So here's the syntax of a basic if statement. We're going to say if, so that's a key word, some condition. So some condition is usually some sort of comparison operation that we just saw in the previous section of the course. So that could be something like if hungry is equal to true, colon, and then notice that that blue line is indented further than the if statement. So that says anything along that indentation is going to be executed if that condition happens to be true. Now on top of an if statement, we can add an else to this. So let's say that condition doesn't happen to be true, we can have another block of code execute. So in this logic, we say if some condition happens to be true, we execute some code. Else, meaning that condition didn't have to be true, we do something else. And notice how the else doesn't have a condition attached to it. It only actually executes if the conditions above didn't happen to be true. You should also notice that the if and else indentation wise are lined up with each other. If you want to check for multiple conditions before that else statement executes, you can have an elif statement or elif statement. And basically you say, if some condition that executes some code, elif, some other condition, do something different. And you can have as many of these elifs as you want. And then finally, all the way at the end, you can have an else statement to do something else. Okay, let's explore all these concepts by actually coding out some examples in a Jupyter Notebook. To begin all of this, we're going to start with the simplest example we can do, which is a single line of an if statement with just a Boolean condition. We're saying if true, colon, and note what happens when I hit enter, I have this indentation automatically done for me. And if you're using any text editor and you have defined the file as a .py script already, you should see this indentation occur automatically for you as well. Then we're going to say print, it's true. So then I'm going to run this and we see if true, print it's true. So notice we're saying if some condition is true, print it's true. Now typically you won't have just a Boolean like this, otherwise you'll always be printing that. Instead what you may have is something like a comparison operation. So we'll say if three is greater than two, print it's true. We run that and we get back it's true. And then to make this even more realistic, we'll say hungry, set a variable there, we'll say hungry is equal to true. And then I'll say if hungry print feed me. And if you run that, we see that we get feed me. We can also then set hungry to false. And now if I run this code again, notice I don't get back anything else. So I have some condition and it happened to be false, meaning this block of code didn't execute. What I could do is add in an else statement to execute if this condition doesn't happen to be true. So we hit enter again, and then we hit backspace in order to line up our else block with that if statement. So if we want this else to be lined up with this if, they need to be at the same indentation in our code. And a lot of times when you're working with any text editor, it'll kind of automatically line things up for you. So keep that in mind. So else doesn't have any other conditions attached to it because we're only going to execute else if none of the conditions above happen to be true. So right now we're saying, if you're hungry, print feed me. Otherwise print, I'm not hungry. I'll run this. And right now, because hungry was equal to false, we're getting back, I'm not hungry. If we change hungry to be true, 
we get back feed me. What's also important to notice is that I'm just passing right here hungry by itself as a Boolean. I don't actually need to do something like this, check that hungry is equal to true, because hungry by itself is already a Boolean. And we'll explore that example later on in more detail. So if hungry prints feed me, else prints I'm not hungry. Okay, now let's discuss multiple branches using if, elif, and else. So let's look at another example. I'm going to say LOC, which stands for location, and I'm going to set that equal to bank. So I have a location, it's equal to bank, and I'm going to say if my location is equal to an auto shop, I will print cars are cool. Else, I'll print I do not know much. So when I run this, it says I do not know much because the location was bank and we have location equal to auto shop, print cars are cool. So that didn't execute. So then we have else printing I do not know much. What we can do is check for other conditions using elif. So let's pass in another condition here. We'll say elif, the location is equal to the bank, then print money is cool, as I'm sure everyone at the bank says. And then we run this and we get back money is cool. So here we can stack on as many conditions using an elif statement. So we can add in more elifs for more conditions. We can say loc is equal to store colon print welcome to the store. We run that and we still get back money is cool. But as soon as we start changing this condition, let's change it to auto shop. We run that, we get back cars are cool. If we change it to store, we get back welcome to the store. And if we change it to something else that's not in any of these conditions, then we'll have the else block code execute. So let's see what that looks like. Let's say we're going to some game and it says, I do not know much. Perfect. All right, just to drive this point home of indentation and white space, we're going to do one last very simple example, pretty much exactly the same as the last one. Let's define a name. We'll say Sammy. And we'll say if this person's name is equal to, let's say Frankie, we'll print out, hello Frankie. Then we'll say elif, we have some other name. If elif name is equal to Sammy, print out, hello Sammy. And then typically for your else condition, it's gonna be something where none of the other conditions were met. So a good thing to do here would be ask the person what their name is, what is your name? And later on in another lecture, we'll actually learn how to get input from the user. But for right now, let's focus on a couple things here. Note the indentation and note how if, elif, and else are all lined up with each other and their respective blocks are all indented. And then we also have this colon at the end of these conditions. So now when I run this, we should expect to see hello Sammy. And if I were to change this to Frankie and run it again, I get back hello Frankie. And if I change this to a name that's not there, like Jose, I get back what is your name? All right, that's the basics of if, elif, and else. They seem pretty simple and hopefully they were pretty straightforward to you. Later on, we're going to use them to create really nice large pieces of code that can execute more complex tasks. We'll see you at the next lecture.